congratulations on your big win. Uh, you you really got it going there, especially as the day went along. Uh, it gets pretty intense out there. Did you have anybody encroaching on your water at all today? No, uh, I did not. Um, there, were, I saw a few boats, you know, within the area that I ended up catching most of my fish at, but I didn't have any trouble with anybody whatsoever. Hi, Todd. Can you explain in detail what bait and pattern was the most productive for you today? I actually brought them with me. Uh, I, I caught, uh, I started off fishing a Strike King cutter worm in June bug color, and I was just Texas rigging it with a 3 16 ounce Strike King tungsten weight and casting it and reeling it around the, the outside edge of the grass. Um, during the first break that we had, I sat down and I tied on a Strike King swimming caffeine shad and I used an eighth ounce weight with it, 30 pound sunline braid. And it's a bigger profile bait and I could, it has more bulk to it. And I could, I could, it seemed like the fish could find it a little bit easier. The fish wanted the bait real fast and I was reeling it real fast around the grass. And um, they were obviously feeding on shad. There was a tremendous amount of shad in this grass, particular grass bed that I was fishing, and I think that was the key. What hook were you using on that? I was using a four aught offset, uh, strong hook, seven foot uh, castaway rod. Hackney had a uh, 16 fish weighing 28 pounds. He had an 18 pound lead to start off the morning. What was going through your head? Uh, try to try to get in the top four. That's what was going through my head. Um, I think as well as the other anglers that were participating. When a guy jumps out to that big of a lead, um, you just kind of are like, well, okay, we can't, we can't catch him. Let's just try to make it to the next round and come in the top four. Because everybody else, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty, the weights were pretty low except for Hackney. And that was my goal, uh, just getting a top, top four. And that goal kind of changed about halfway through the third period. So when something like that's going on, I mean, uh, Hack was really rolling there in those early stages of today's round. Uh, you talked about that kind of your goal changed from maybe trying to win to trying to be in the top four, but do you start thinking about what is he doing that's causing this kind of success? Do you try to figure out what he's throwing, where he is, that kind of thing? Well, that obviously is, I mean, just human nature, that's going to go through your go through your mind, you know. And, uh, you know, Hackney's a shallow water grass fisherman, and, I mean, it was, I, I mean I'd be willing to bet that's probably how he was catching them, and, he, he found a group of fish, you know. We were fishing a really big, big pool. I mean, there was a lot of room, you know. We got a 30-minute runaround, but, I mean, you couldn't look at a third of it in that 30-minute runaround. So my my thoughts were, you know, I just haven't found the right spot, and he, he landed on them, you know. And it was just kind of a process of elimination. You don't want to be negative that early in the day, and you don't want to be like, oh, well, gosh, here we go, you know, it's over with. Uh, instead, I try to do it in a positive and say, okay, I've eliminated this water. Let's go look at some other water. Several of you guys have noted this week and in other weeks of major league fishing competition that invariably every round somebody gets something going really good early, but it doesn't last throughout the day. And normally the guy that wins comes from comes on strong in the second period and especially the third period. How do you put the blinders on? How do you stay focused and just your nose to the grindstone throughout the day, knowing that it may look bad now, but I've still got two periods to go? Well, that's that's the nature of our sport um, is, you know, I've been in Hackney's shoes before. You know, I've, I've had that lead and, and felt it, you know, dwindle out in the last five minutes before. I've been in that, that position, and it's not a good feeling. Um, as competitors, I mean, all you're doing is trying to, to, to catch as much as you can, you know, and um, that's, that's what my goal is every time I go out there is to catch as much as I can. If it's more than the other guys, great. If it's not, I did my best. You had a pretty impressive performance today, which means that you are now qualified into the sudden death round later this week. Do you feel like you can do it again when it's your turn to fish for the sudden death round? Well, as, as competitors I mean you have to feel like you can do it again I mean I definitely have some momentum going I have 
confidence, you know. I mean, I have no idea where we'll be fishing at, you know, in the elimination round. I'm sure it's going to be somewhere other than where we fish today. Um, that's kind of just how MLF does it. And they kind of take you out of your comfort zone and uh, they try to make it as challenging as possible. So uh, what do you think the commissioner, Don Rutz, what do you think he's going to set the cut weight at? Um, I don't know. I don't know what was caught in the first two uh, rounds, but today I would say based on what today, if it's based on our deal, I would say probably 28, 27, somewhere around that. What would you like us to base it on? I don't care. It doesn't <laughs> matter to me. I just hope I catch them good enough. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of catching them, uh, this is being contested in La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, the first week of September. And it's literally one week, not not even a week, three days after you uh, had a, a very electric comeback to win the season finale in the Bassmaster Elite Series Tour over in Michigan. Uh, a lot of people describe fishing as a sport of momentum. And if it's so, if it is a sport of momentum, you got the mojo going right now. Well, I'd like to think so. You know, I mean, I've, I've, definitely, I've definitely had a pretty good last two or three weeks uh, fishing wise but you know mid midway through this season I was in a pretty good slump and uh, um, it's funny how the sport is and it's funny how you know if you get the bad momentum going it, you can't get rid of it so hopefully I've got the good momentum going and then hopefully it won't vacate me very quickly. I think you proved that today. <laughs> how did you get out of the slump? You know I don't have an answer for that question. I've, I've I've been been asked that question several times as of late, and um, I, I don't have an answer for it. I, I think as a competitor in any sport, um, you hear guys say just, you know, if a hitter's having a slump and he's in a bad slump in baseball, you, you just keep swinging. And as a fisherman, I think you just have to keep casting. You, uh, you've competed in Major League Fishing now for several years. You've been an alternate. You've fished at the Geico Select level. You fished at the cup level. Um, is there any difference uh, in your mind between the select level where you competed earlier this summer and the cup level? Uh, the events uh, are held at different times of the year. There's different anglers involved. What are the differences in your mind, if there are any, between the two portions of major league fishing? Well, when you win in a select, you're done. <laughs> so if I don't want, if if this would have been a select event, I'd have won today, and I'd be done. So. <laughs> That's uh, it's a little different format, uh, um, you know. In order to to be the champ in this deal, you have to go through like three processes, and um, on the select deal is it's pretty much one process. So that's the biggest difference. Uh, you know, the competitors are 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 skilled in in both 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 events. Um, you have the marquee names in the in the cup deal, and. Um, there's a lot of great fishermen in the select deal, but the big names are in the cup deal. And, so, uh, let me follow up on that a little bit. Uh, conversation uh, a couple of reporters and I were having earlier this week, uh, you said marquee names. Uh, obviously, there's the Kevin Van Dams of the world that are here, the Skeet Reeses, those guys. But Todd Faircloth is the only angler in the history of the Bassmaster Elite Series to win five Bassmaster Elite Series tournaments. Uh, you're, you've fished in as many major league fishing events, I think, as maybe anybody but Scott Suggs and Brent Chapman. Uh, and we were discussing that while, yeah, Kevin and Skeet and others might be the so-called marquee names, you're as good as any angler in the world. Well, I appreciate that. that I'm, I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, I don't, you know, these guys are, are my friends. You know, we're a big family out here on the road, and, uh, you know, I. I admire and look up to all of them, and uh, I wish them the best. You know, I don't, as a competitor, it's not so much about beating the other person to me. It's about who, who does the best job on the water that day. And, um, you know, if, if that means, you know, you, other people may look at it like, well, you beat him. To me, it's not so much about beating that person. I just, I figured it out better. I did a better job on the water, and I came in ahead of that person instead of beating. Uh, speaking of what you did on the water today, I'm just curious, how long did it take you to get to that bait? Did you try two or three baits? Did you see the shad working? How many baits did you go through till you arrived at that? I tried several baits this morning. You know, I went through 
several baits. And and I and I tried several baits throughout the day, even after I started catching them on this one, just to keep them honest, I guess you would say. But um, <clears throat> you know, that's the process that we go through in a normal s tournament style event. We already know based because we've been out there practicing right. and we we've got a good understanding of what we're going to use once the tournament begins and this deal you have to kind of go through all those steps during the tournament so um you know there's normally a certain bait for a certain situation that's going to work better than others and you know once i get a bite on a bait and i know i'm around fish then i'll start changing baits to see if there's something that they want better you know, um, I pretty much have four or five confidence lures, what I would call confidence lures that I start with and I go with and I fish with. And then once I get around fish and I get a few bites, then I start changing baits up to see if there's a particular bait or a particular color or a particular style that they like better. Todd, wow. uh, earlier this week, uh, the, the, the brown uh, small mouse played a little bit bigger role in one round than they did in the other round when the green, the large mouse, tended to be uh, very dominant that day. What was your day like? Was it a mixture of brown and green, or did one species uh, predominate throughout the day? I fished for largemouth all day. I caught a smallmouth that I think was absolutely lost. I don't know what he was doing there. <laughs> I had no intentions of fishing for smallmouth today. Um, um, I, I have fished the Mississippi River before and had some success on it. Uh, I've actually won an event out of lacrosse um, a few years back, but not on the pool that we were fishing today. So, um, you know, I do have some history on this style of fishing. You know, I, I had never been to where we had fished today, never seen it before. Um, but <clears throat> I feel comfortable anytime a lake, river, whatever the system is, if it's got some aquatic vegetation in it, I like that. I, that's what I grew up fishing. Um, um, I love any, any lake or river that has grass in it. And um, when I saw that we were gonna be fishing there, they gave me a map and I saw the big lake on Alaska off the Mississippi River there. When you have that much water, that big of an area and that much grass, there's gonna be a, a school of fish in there somewhere, a, a sizable school of fish in there somewhere. So that's where I focused all my efforts at. All right, you've been real generous with your time. One last question. Um, you know, Kevin's won an, a Major League Fishing Championship Cup. Uh, that's kind of expected. I think a lot of people were not surprised by that. Scott Suggs last year fought his way up through the select competition and made it to the uh, to this very event. He's the defending champion at this event and won at Waterville, Maine, uh, the General Tire Summit Cup. What would it mean to you being a select guy, uh, being able to do what Scott did a year ago and upset all of these so-called marquee names? Well, maybe, maybe maybe that that would make me feel like I belong here a little bit more, you know. Um, um, it is what it is, you know. The guys that are in the cup are in the cup, and the guys that are in the select are fight, fighting, trying to get get here. And uh, um, you know, I'd love to win it to prove that I do belong, and uh, I think that's 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 my thoughts on it.